I want to tell you about something that I use fairly frequently. Sometimes I'm out on the job, I've forgotten a rasp that I need to shape the inside of a hollow, like on the inside of this. So I would take a piece of broom handle, cut it in two, stick on some sandpaper, and I've got everything I need for a poor man's rasp to get into those areas that I might not get with any other tool that I've got. I've got a flat face on this side. Just screw some sandpaper on there and you're good to go. It's a great shaping tool, it works. I've used it many, many times in times of need. I don't know about you, if you've bought an old vintage saw, sometimes they've got split nuts on them and they can be hard to tighten. You don't want to use a regular screwdriver because you could damage them. What I do, or I have done, is I just took an old screwdriver and I filed out the mid section and that will insert into the, um, the head like that and you just turn it, tighten up the screw and you've got that for life. It's a great tool, very handy and you won't damage the heads on the uh, split nuts. Sometimes when you're using a marking gauge on a piece of wood like this, you're running that gauge line and it jars along the way. If you take this off, or take it down and just rub some beeswax onto the stem and also onto the face of the gauge like this, then it will move so much more smoothly and it will glide along the wood so easily. It's worth doing, you only have to do it every two or three months, it's simple. I've been using a square awl all my life, 50 odd years I've been using a square awl and what this all relies on is the square corners because this reams out the wood. So you just take a flat file and you file the facets like that with one through stroke onto each of the four facets and that will work perfectly. And then you can use it on the wood and it will ream out the corners on the wood perfectly. It's really a great tool to have and that's the simplest way to sharpen it. There are different ways uh, that we use spoke shaves and just to give you an example, I'm using a, a spoke shave here. Sometimes I've got the spoke shave set for a heavy cut like this here. And instead of altering the setting, I can just pull the spoke shave forward like this and it'll take a lighter cut. It's the same on a scallop. Let me show you on this one. I love spoke shaves and I've used them all my life. When you're pushing this into the cut, there's a heavy cut like that and it cuts nicely but sometimes I want to refine that cut. I can go in just by rolling the spoke shave forward a little bit so I just roll it, tilt it forward like that and it'll take off super fine shavings instead of thick shavings. One of the arch enemies in a small garage workshop like I've got is the space that I'm working in and that becomes very problematic when you're working in a three-dimensional way, so you've made a chair, you've got clamps going in every direction. What I do, what I recommend my students do, instead of having the clamps like this, where you've got two going in one direction, one going in the other, making it five feet long instead of four feet long, make sure all your clamps are going in the same direction. That way you don't have these uh, spikes sticking out. Imagine this in a three-dimensional object, the, the clamped legs are going all over the place. This means you've re least reduced the footprint in your work area. Sometimes when you're plowing a groove with a plow plane, like this, now this is working perfectly, but sometimes you get some contrary grain and it stops cutting. It's not because the plane isn't working. Take a chisel, the size of the groove, Go into the chisel like this and start plowing again like this and that will pull the plane, the blade, right down to task and it will take care of wild grain. It's a perfect solution. When you're chopping a mortise and you want it to go down to a very specific depth, let's say one inch, measure on the chisel the one inch distance with a rule make a mark across, that will stay there long enough for you to chop the whole mortise and then you can chop down to that depth. When you get to the line you just stop and move along the mortise, you've got an equal deep depth, that's not a word, that's an equal depth to your mortise. 
On many projects, we use sandpaper between coats um, to take down the surface nibbing, which is the fuzzy bits on the surface of the, on the uh, finished wood. But what you can do, instead of using sandpaper, which abrades the surface, you can take a card scraper like this, a nicely newly sharpened scraper, and just pull it very lightly across the surface like this. And it'll take off that surface nibbing and that will be smooth. You can do that between coats all the way through to the very last level and then you're ready to apply that last coat and all the nibbing will be gone. When you've just finished gluing up and you have got glue oozing from the joint lines, just take some shavings off the floor. Instead of introducing water and wet cloths to your work, just use the shavings to clean off the excess. Oops. And that will make sure the, the, the glue inside will dry much quicker if you've taken off that excess glue. So thank you for watching my 10 top tips. I think it's been fun. I think you'll enjoy following me on Instagram. This is a great way to learn woodworking, get on with it. I've enjoyed doing this for you. I hope you enjoy it.